Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Today uh, I'm going to show you my first real attack of uh, uh, a first um, model that uh, I'm working with for uh, the Karen Super Trader strategy. This is a very basic model. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of intelligence, but I just want to show you the um, pretty well just more the highlights and the capabilities of Simulink uh, with the little lamps that I got here as well as um, various uh, MATLAB functions and uh, some other things as well. So let me walk you through it. So as you know, as we come into the Simulink, we have the browsers, sorry, the library browser. This is the, um, the, uh, the uh, model itself. And essentially what we are doing is we are feeding in, now I've shown this vid, uh, in another video where it will load in uh, 50 um, random numbers from a mat file. Uh, also, I'm going to be supplying the period for 50 days and standard deviation of 2. And as I said, we've got um, various uh, MATLAB functions. So let me show you the, the more important one, which is the uh, Bollinger Band. Uh, this is a as you can tell, a, uh, a MATLAB function that's embedded within uh, MATLAB. Now, how it works is we have our function, we have our prices, which is pretty well generic, but as I said, we're just loading in 50 um, random numbers between the range of, I think, 100 and 110. Uh, I hard code the, um, the uh, period and the standard deviation I have full control over this uh, I, you know I'm still new to simulink but I just want to get this out the door as fast as possible to show you uh, the capabilities again so this this will have to change uh, where it can be uh, loaded or initiated through uh, the simulink model and pass through the simulink model to this function but we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out so um, what we have here is we have returning uh, parameters of upper bound and lower bound of the Bollinger Band. And essentially where I got this algorithm was, was from here. Uh, I, I, I have highlighted this before. Just give me a second here, I'll uh, pull that up. This is kind of an important, um, uh, an important, uh, yeah, here. All right, so here's, uh, nope, that's not what we want. Um, we want this one. Okay, so essentially this is the algorithm. As you can see, like, this is really well defined um, because I can get the exact results. Uh, so this function, if I plug in these values here, 25.5, 26.75, and so on into a matrix, uh, and the result will end up of uh, a square root of 0 0.0604, upper band of 27.808, 25.392. I've confirmed that this function does work, this little calculation, uh, and uh, it's exact. So if there are more um, examples out there like this, like line by line on how to exactly calculate it, I think the world would be a much better place. But again, we can use MuPad uh, to verify when you get the output of your algorithms. The output matches with what you see in your, I don't know, your research paper, whatever you get online. Okay, so that is a bonus. So we run this Bollinger um, function here and we'll return here the upper band and the lower band. So all essentially what we're doing is we're just calculating the moving average of the prices. Uh, we kind of like, I don't know, like difference, but the difference between the prices and the moving average is square it. And you take the square root of the sum uh, divided by the length of the, or the number of prices that you have. And uh, you generate your upper bound and lower bound using this with a standard deviation. All right, so let's go back to the model and simulate. 
Okay, so this is what I just explained. And again, we have the outbound. You'll notice here we're not using state flow. And, and I'm starting to think maybe state flow, uh, unless you're getting into really complicated uh, models and state, um, with different state, um, different states, uh, it can kind of confuse the situation. So from what I've read, it, 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 they did say to leverage a lot of these MATLAB functions, which obviously I did. So we got this one I just explained, the Bollinger Band. Um, also, uh, I want to know what my last price is. So we have a prices uh, argument here, and all it really does is just grabs the latest price. It's, that's the current one that we want. So it just returns that um, value. Nothing fancy there. Then um, we have to check the two uh, on the Bollinger ranges, on the upper and bound. So all we're doing here is, uh, let me uh, check on the, so we have the last price, and I'll just check against the uh, lower bound, let's say. And it's very simple. Um, Simulink is pretty ugly at uh, generating uh, like an if block. It's really confusing, so I just decided to simplify it and actually use a, 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 a function, a MATLAB function to do this. So it might be a little wonky, um, but all you're doing is passing the last price, the lower bound uh, that we've calculated, and if the last price does break through or greater than the lower bound, um, uh, actually that might be, a, a, uh, actually, I think it should be less than, but eh, whatever. We set a buy signal, and we have a buy signal of zero, if there's nothing uh, that doesn't met that condition. But we also have to check on the um, upper bound as well, which does the same thing. So if our last price is greater than the upper bound of the Bollinger band, um, and we have a buy signal. I just remembered something. Here, because uh, you're breaking through the lower bound, this should be really a, a sell signal. Um, so that's just a typo, but uh, again, we're just, it's not, uh, I would never recommend putting this in a production system, but I just wanted to show you, the, again, the capabilities of Simulink. So you can see we have these little values get displayed, uh, little markers on each signal that's generated at the output of um, that lab function. We also set, set the scopes, it's just for display purposes, really, I don't really use them. But we also have these little lamps, so um, essentially um, it connects into this signal here. So let's say for this lamp, which this lamp is really the uh, buy lamp. This is like really a buy signal lamp. So if it's green, it means it's buying. If it's red, it doesn't mean it's doing anything. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's pretty well that, um, and I just, corresponds with the signal here. Also, uh, we've done the same thing. Now remember, this is a cell, okay, um, cell signal. So let me just run it. Now, if you've seen my previous video on how to run this, uh, I'm hoping to basically have this run in, in, in an infinite way. I've already set it, but I'm not sure on how to do it because these numbers are random. So it'd be nice to be able to see uh, different values get updated. But let me just run this uh, the one time. So you can see it updates all the values. Um, and uh, it, 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 it will correspond the differences between the sell or the buy. So if I stop it and then move to the next signal, so you can see it's uh, changing all the values so and so forth. So you can see here, this one means it's going to sell, doesn't do anything on the, on the buy. And uh, that's all it really is. Um, but as I said, the real problem right now is just being able to um, um, basically repeat and, and iterate it forever and update these automatically. I have to figure that out. But overall, it, it, it didn't take too long to do it with uh, using these MATLAB functions instead of uh, the confusion of state flow. 
um, and uh, let's generate some code. All right, so uh, as I've shown this before, um, to generate code, uh, you just come under options, code generation options. We have the two different um, uh, targets or languages, sorry, C, C++. I've included those. I've also uh, done a, um, a separate video on, on the on the um, on the uh, on the uh, you know check checklist I guess you call it uh, of, of creating these simulate models. But anyways, let me just show you what we've got here. So um, a lot of people are going to always ask about source code and, and all the files. Let me just walk you through this. This folder. These two folders are the co-generated folders uh, using that process I just showed you. Here's a C, um, and these are just more like samples as I progress uh, using Simulink. So this is obviously the C++. Um, I'm not going to go through that right now. Um, I've also included uh, in the previous video the Bollinger Band, uh, the Bollinger um, uh, and, and the uh, last price uh, Simulink model is the SLX, that's the model for Simulink. Um, we also have got um, a plot function, I've, I've shown that in the previous video. Uh, I've got the random generator script uh, and the, um, actually it's this one here, this, this, this one here. But it's all included uh, and obviously this is available for uh, my Quantum Leap members. Um, so, so we're making some good progress now. Uh, I can generate C, C++. So now that we have this basic uh, algorithm, uh, you need, uh, I will obviously need to make it a lot more sophisticated. Um, but essentially the next steps include um, basically building a message queuing system uh, that's built into this generated code. Uh, with C or C++, whatever I choose, most likely C++. Uh, that's with C, uh, Reddit using Redis as a message queuing. Uh, originally, I was going to use zero MQ. You could do that, but I want redundancy and failover. And the other big step is to be able to, on the cell and the buy, um, there's two big uh, steps. The first one is to maintain a something like a Postgres database to log the positions once they're open. Um, obviously, this is a very uh, like a really a dummy, um, a dummy uh, model uh, doesn't maintain positions at all. That's what the database will be for. As well as um, that's one step. And the other last step is the um, order management, the integration between when there is a signal to buy or sell from this model, and being able to send that over to an order management system. Uh, using uh, obviously interactive brokers. Uh, with interactive brokers is definitely the uh, chosen um, the chosen uh, broker. Um, so there's going to be uh, another message queuing system using Redis uh, from this model or co-generated model uh, from Simulink and then uh, all those orders will uh, be pushed through the message queue using Redis again into a, a client uh, which will uh, be sitting there receiving orders uh, which will handle and basically is an engine to interactive brokers and it'll open up the positions. I've, I've demoed that before using something like uh, um, the TWS link. I did a, a, a survey on it last weekend and, and, and not very many responses, but it looks like uh, it's a split right down the line to see if I should use TWS Link or do I use the Java API and interactive brokers. So there's going to be a lot of steps involved, but I just wanted to get this very kind of dummy uh, algorithms uh, set up because a lot of the work is not actually done in this model. It's done in the position management and the risk management on the Karen strategy uh, as she um, We'll watch the options. So I got to figure all that out. But all in all, pretty good, pretty good progress. But again, this is just the initial algorithm. 
using Simulink with the code generation of uh, C or C++. So I just thought I'd uh, introduce this to you. Talk to you later.